Welcome to Who's Gonna Be a POD Millionaire? I'm your host, Leah, and I'm here today with Christina, a POD expert who you may know on TikTok and YouTube as See You Online. She's gonna take a shot at 15 questions all about print on demand. She'll have 30 seconds to answer each question and the questions will get progressively harder as we go. She'll get two lifelines in case she needs some help. A 50-50 where we'll remove two of the incorrect answers and phone Martin, where she'll get to consult with our in-house expert, Martin. If Christina answers all 15 questions correctly, she'll win a year of free Printify Premium to build that million dollar POD business. Play along and let us know in the comments if you're on your way to becoming a POD millionaire. Ready? Christina, welcome. Are you ready to start? Yes, I am. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Question number one. What is the number one sold product using print on demand? A, t-shirts, B, hoodies, C, mugs, or D, stickers? Ooh, I'm actually between t-shirts and stickers. I sell t-shirts <laughs> um, and those have always been my best sellers, but I know a lot of people also sell stickers. I'm going to say a t-shirts. That is correct. Good to follow your gut. That is your best seller. Yes, a t-shirts is the number one sold product. Question number two. In what color mode should a design be previewed to get a better representation of the actual print? A, RGB, B, CMYK, C, PNG, or D, JPEG? I'm going with B, CMYK. That is a correct answer. Designs oh. should be previewed in CMYK, yes. Question number three, which printing method is typically used to create AOP products? A, DTG, B, screen printing, C, digital printing, or D, sublimation? I'm going with D. Is that your final answer? Uh, <laughs> now that you said that, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean to make you overthink. Sublimation, digital printing. I, I think it is D. You are correct. Oh, D, sublimation. <laughs> Question number four. What is it called when two different niches are combined? Micro niche, cross niche, Sub niche, cross stitch. Um, I'm going to say B for this one, cross niche, because sub niche would be a lower version of that niche. And you are correct. Yes, you, you knew that one right away. And I'm glad you didn't say cross stitch. <laughs> I thought there was going to be a cross something else. I was like, oh no, this one works. <laughs> Question number five. What is it called when you publish more than one version of something to see which will get better results? A, usability testing. B, A-B testing. C, user testing. Or D, beta testing. I'm gonna lock in number B, A-B testing. <laughs> number B. And the correct answer is yes, letter B, A-B. Letter B. <laughs> Question number six. For cut and sew products, why is it important to fully cover the bleed area with your design before printing? To avoid potentially seeing white streaks, to get a higher resolution, to make the design more vibrant, or so the ink doesn't bleed. I'm going to put, why is it important to fully cover the bleed area with your design before printing? I'm going to go with D so the ink doesn't bleed. 
Is that your final answer? Oh no, I hate when you do this. Let me reread them again. <laughs> Will it cover the bleed area with the design for cut and sew products? I'm gonna use a lifeline for this one. Okay, and so would you like to use your 50-50 or phone Martin? I'm gonna phone Martin. All right, Martin, we have you on the call. Can you join us, please? Yes, happy to do so. Christina, I'm rooting for you. Uh, happy to help, <laughs> happy to be your expert. The question, Martin, was for cut and sew products, why is it important to fully cover the bleed area with your design before printing? Is it A, to avoid potentially seeing white streaks, B, to get a higher resolution, C, to make the design more vibrant, or D, so the ink doesn't bleed? Christina, the answer is A, you don't wanna see those white streaks. Okay, I am trusting Martin, I'm going with A. <laughs> and you're gonna lock in A. That is the correct answer. Yay. Yes. <laughs> So the bleed area is kind of like the part that gets sewn in, might not be seen, but that's why we recommend covering it to avoid seeing those white streaks. All right, thank you so much, Martin, for your help. Christina, fantastic. You're moving on to question awesome. number seven. Which products aren't printed using the DTG method? A, socks. B, tote bags. C, t-shirts or D, posters? Hmm. I'm going to go with doing a 50-50 here. So, Christina, you've decided to use your 50-50. We will remove two of the incorrect answers. So it is not A, socks, and it is not C, t-shirts. So either B, tote bags, or D, posters. I thought. Hmm. I'm going to go with then tote bags. Wait, no, I don't know. Direct to G would be direct to garment, which is not a poster. I feel like tote bags would be screen printed, but direct to garment, posters aren't a garment. Okay, I'm gonna go D posters. <laughs> you are correct. Ah, okay. Yes, yeah, okay. so <laughs> your thought process led you in the right direction. Posters are not a garment, right? Posters Perfect. are yes. typically printed with digital printing. <laughs> Perfect. Very good. <laughs> so we are moving on then to question number eight. Which of these is not considered a marketplace platform? A, Etsy, B, WooCommerce, C, Walmart, or D, eBay? I'm going with B, WooCommerce. That is the correct answer. B, WooCommerce is not considered a marketplace. Question number nine. What is the best way to protect your brand name? A, patent, B, copyright, C, trademark, or D, telling people not to copy you? <laughs> I'm going to, hmm, between B and C. Obviously, hmm, I'm gonna go with trademark. That's when you, t you get the TM. I'm going to go with C, trademark. And you're gonna lock that answer in? I think so. Yes, you are correct. <laughs> the best way to protect your brand name is a trademark. It's not the only way, of course, but it is the best way. Oh, maybe I could do it. <laughs> <laughs> Question number 10. What process targets unpaid traffic to increase visits to your shop? A, localization. B, SEO. C, niche research or D, CEO? <laughs> With B, SEO. Final answer. What process targets unpaid traffic to increase visit to your shop? Yes. And yes, you are correct. SEO targets unpaid traffic. 
Question number 11. What type of fiber do most athletic apparel companies use for t-shirts? A, cotton. B, polyester. C, rayon. Or D, wool. I think, but I'm not 100%, is B, polyester. And are you locking in that answer? Fine. Athletic apparel. I don't look at my athletic apparel. Yes, I'm going to put B. You are correct. Oh, okay. Yes, polyester. I'm sweat and I don't know what <laughs> rayon is. I'm glad you did not choose wool. Yes, that would probably make <laughs> a lot of people sweat while working out. <laughs> it wouldn't smell great after. <laughs> Question number 12. Are you ready? I'm ready. Which technique is best for designing a gradient-like effect on DTG t-shirts? Is it A, semi-transparent gradient, B, continuous tone, C, transparent gradient, or D, halftone gradient? I'm going to go with D, halftone gradient. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure, but I, I don't use transparencies as my design. I'm gonna lock in. Final answer, D. Yes. You are correct. Awesome. <laughs> Amazing, all right. You're getting close. We have three more questions. How, how are you feeling? Are you ready? Pretty good, okay. I'm ready, I got three more. <laughs> Question number 13. What were two of Etsy's trending colors for 2022? Very Perry Purple and Chartreuse, Emerald Green and Magenta, Honeycomb and Indigo, or Sky Blue and Pink? Huh. Huh. <laughs> I don't even know what color Honeycomb is, but I like <laughs> the color Indigo. Honeycomb Indigo. This one's going to be a full guess here. Emerald Green and Magenta. I feel like that's not very, very purple. Bruce. I'm going to make it simple and try Sky Blue and Pink. Sky Blue and Pink. Is that your final answer? Very, very purple. I'm going to say yes. You answered D, sky blue and pink. Yeah. Unfortunately, Darn. that is incorrect. Ah. It was B, emerald green and magenta. But you did so good. You got 12 out of 15 questions is still amazing. It just shows that you are pretty knowledgeable about the POD industry. Darn this one. I was feeling so confident until I saw this one come up. It's like, I don't know colors. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Christina answered 12 out of 15 questions correctly, which is pretty good. Do you have what it takes to be a POD millionaire? Share your results down below. And if you wanna keep your POD knowledge in check, like this video and subscribe to our channel. <laughs>